Have you ever heard the phrase, I wish I had a crystal ball? Well, why would you want a crystal ball? Well, I think it's so that you could see into the future and you could make better decisions based on the knowledge that you have in the future. Well, I have figured out that if you'll read, you can get a crystal ball because there are people who have more knowledge than I do about situations that are going to change. And if I can glean from their knowledge, I can make better decisions. And I have read three books that I think help me make better decisions. And I always feel the last book I read is the best book I read. And the last book that I'm currently reading is, is this one here called The Co Coming Wave. And it's about artificial intelligence. And it's written by the founder of DeepMinds, which is one of Google's companies that specializes in AI. And I think it has opened my eyes as to why my bus portfolios are going to outperform and give me at least a 3x return over the next three to five years. Now, what I want to do is share what I've learned with you. But in return for that, I need something from you. I need you to like this video, and I think I need you to subscribe to the video, and then I think I need you to leave a comment. Because those three things will tell Google that you believe this this video has value, and then they will share it with other people, and they will help me grow my channel, and that will help me achieve my goal, and that is to make the world a better place for everybody who wants to invest in the future. This is not financial advice. This is Kerry Grinkmeyer, retired financial advisor, sharing his wealth of knowledge and the wealth of knowledge of others. And these are three of the books that I want to tell you more about. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Grinkmeyer. I started this by saying I read a lot, and that's not true. Uh, the reality is I'm dyslexic, so I can't read a lot. I read very slowly. So what I do is I subscribe to Audible, and Audible gives me a credit for, I think it's $16 a month, every, every month, and then I go find a book that is going to change my knowledge and serve as my crystal ball. There's a link down there that if you're not a part of Audible, you'll get your first book free. But then beyond then, go to the other links on these books, and I'll share them with you. Really? the one, the first crystal ball was this one, uh, The Future is Faster Than You Think by Peter Demopidis. Um, and and it, it, it's a broad look at what the future is going to hold. But then from there, what, what it cued me into was something that I was very interested in, and that's genome sequencing, genome editing. And that took me to this book, uh, The Code Breaker by Walter Isaacson. In fact, Walter just released a book yesterday on Elon Musk, which will be the next book that I read after I finish this one. But what this does is, is gives me the knowledge that I don't possess that other people do. Um, it, it, such as Amy Webb, with the first book I read from hers was The Big Nine. But this one introduced me to something called synthetic biology. And I learned that, in fact, what they're doing is bringing DNA onto a computer chip to basically help the medical world advance faster and and it will eventually create a, a means by which to alter the humanity as as we know it. So that's where I've gone. And then recently, this just came out the first of this month, um, the coming wave, and this has been eye opening to me because what it did was it taught me that what is about to happen as a result of artificial intelligence, to use his story, is as important as the invention of fire. Now that. The, it, early on, he explains that. Before fire, we were Neanderthals. We were just another one of the animals in the animal kingdom. And go find a picture of a Neanderthal, and you'll notice that his jaw is very big, and his teeth stick out very wide. Well, if you look at the animal kingdom, that's pretty much how animals look. Well, why is that? Because they have to hunt their food, and then they kill the other animal, and then they eat, and they chew, and they chew, and they chew. And what that does is it, it makes it very very important that the muscles in your mouth and facial structure are very strong. It makes it very difficult to nourish your body. And without nourishment of your body, your brain doesn't grow. Well, just think about it. 
that's a bear, okay? Uh, that's a dog, uh, particularly a, a non-domesticated dog, a wolf. They hunt their food. Well, that's what man did too. And then as a result of the, the discovery of fire, he learned how to cook his food. And because he cooked his food, he didn't have to chew so much. Because he didn't chew so much and his body became nourished, his brain grew. That is the difference between you, I, a wolf, and a bear. Fire. So what did fire lead to? Healthier men, healthier women, the, the a, a new brain, which led to the steam engine, which led to the internal combustion engine, which led to electricity, which led to uh, the, 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 the internet, which led to today. And it's all because of fire. And as it says in this book, and its, uh, its author is the CEO or the founder of Deep Minds. Deep Minds is now a Google company, the center of their artificial intelligence. And he shares with me that the change in our world will be equivalent to the caveman's discovery of fire. All right, that got me to thinking. That got me to saying, if it's going to change this much, what is it going to look like? Well, basically... In chapter 11, uh, around, uh, what is it, about 7 minutes and 40 seconds into the book, he explains to me that the future is going to be controlled by those companies who have the data and then have the ability to leverage that data to make it as important to fire as the human mind. He goes into a scenario uh, at about 6 minutes uh, no, about six hours and 43 minutes into the book. He says, I will, he tells me, I will be able to go to a platform of large language and I will be able to ask it, help me design a business plan financed by $100,000 that I can create a product that I can sell on Amazon that from that $100,000 I'll be able to create a million dollars within three months. And he said that this program will basically go find you a product that the, the, that the, the world is demanding right now that you can buy very cheap from Alibaba and then you can have, and it will set up the warehousing, the shipping and the warehousing, and, and the pricing, and then it will design a marketing program, and you will merely make sure everything is legal, and you'll push a button, and this thing will make you a millionaire within three months with a $100,000 investment. And I thought to myself, that is insane. But it's true, because what they've done is they've given me a crystal ball and they've given me the ability to access the knowledge of the world. I don't have to be Jeff Bezos. I don't have to be Mark Zuckerberg. I can tap into their minds because everything they've done, everything they've learned is now available to my fingers, through my computer, through, through my phone. And that's about what, what is about to happen. Now, the big revelation this morning in, in chapter 11 was that there are the companies who, who hold the data. Who are they? Apple, Google, Microsoft, and uh, Amazon, and Facebook. They hold the data. Will potentially become stronger than the national, national states. What, what does that mean? They will, they will become stronger than our government. Because, or other governments because they control the data, they control the knowledge, and they control the, the, the money. Okay? So where does, that, where does that take us? So if our government and our Congress can't uh, balance the budget, Google, Apple, Microsoft, uh, Facebook, and, and, and NVIDIA will. Because it is in their best interest now that the country that they dominate runs efficiently so that they can make more money. Now, what will that do to you and I? It will give us equal power because we will have access to the information. Now, will some of us feed on it better than others? Of course. There are some people who will take the knowledge I've just shared with you and read every one of these four books, right? They will do it. The rest will be bystanders. They will just sit back and watch you and I get wealthy because 
we have a crystal ball and they don't. Is it feasible that I'll even be able to go into a platform and say, uh, look at the stock market, look at all the knowledge that you know about what is going to happen in the future and what stock should I buy today? Yes. Will everybody do it? No, because some of them won't pay the $30 to, uh, to Microsoft or Google to give you the platform that gives you that knowledge. They'll say, I want it for free. I'm not going to pay for it. And you and I will pay the $30. We will access the data and we'll move forward. Is that crazy? No, that's the world we live in. That's why Jeff Bezos is a billionaire. That's why Eli Musk is a billionaire. That's why uh, Mark Zuckerberg is a billionaire, and you're not. That's <laughs> it's that simple. But if you'll read and if you'll get your own crystal ball, you'll figure it out before everybody else does, and you'll become a one percenter. I mean, God, it's that simple. But what I know is you haven't read any of these four books. And you probably won't, okay? So that gives me and my tribe members an advantage over you. And we will bury you, okay? Well, no, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure there is a social program available so that you have something to eat, okay? <laughs> and a roof over your head because it we, we will level the playing field. The other beauty of this is when all the competition comes out of it, that the nation states will find a way to, to live in more harmony. Our government will change, and it will change because it is essential for the survival of mankind. We, we, will, we will get rid of global warming. We will get rid of this $32 trillion debt deficit that we have. In the world, we become a better place. Now, you think that's insane. Well, I'll ask you, if you were a caveman and someone came in and said, look what I found, it's, we're going to call it fire, would you say, that's insane? Yes, you would. Yes, you would. And you would sit there and say, the, 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 the government won't let it happen. Bullshit. The government will get out of the way because they want to survive. Just like the bear got out of the way of the Neanderthal man because he had fire and the bear didn't. That is why the wolf runs when the caveman walks out of the cave with fire. Well, I've found fire. And the key to it is in these four books. If you will read these four books in the next three months, you will become a one percenter. I'll guarantee it. But what I also know is 99% of you won't, okay? It's, 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 that's why Elon's Elon. He had passion. He has a, I, I've started some of review of his book. He has a learning disability. He has compensated for it. And those of us who have a learning disability recognize that if we better compensate for it, and if we do, we can outachieve the rest of you. All right, I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm a crazy man. Uh, I want your like. I want your comment. Go ahead, throw your shit at me. I don't care. I know where I'm going. I know where my portfolio is going, and I know where this world is going. Come along if you'd like. You can come along by getting on the bus.